Hello and welcome back to another video. Now, if you're like me, you want to keep your career mode saves realistic as well as keeping them fun. So in this video, I've got a selection of tips that I found throughout FIFA 20, 21, and more recently FIFA 22 that can help keep your career mode save more fun, more realistic, and get you further into it without getting bored. Some of them are related to each other, so make sure you watch the entire video and subscribe if you want to see a few more tips videos like this in the future. So, let's begin with our first tip. Every time you join a new team, you're probably going to have a bunch of players that you don't want to keep. So, the first tip is just going to be keep as many original players as you can. FIFA players have massive squad turnover. Often you'll see people either buying or releasing 10 plus players every single transfer window. In real life, this kills chemistry, and you don't actually get to know your players. To show how much this can actually hurt a team in real life, between 2003 and 2013, Leicester City and Sunderland both signed close to 150 players each. Look where it left them, Leicester City were back in the championship after being in League One, and Sunderland were on a downward trajectory towards the championship themselves. Realistically, two to three starters per season should change, with one or two other players being signed to be future prospects. Lots of people try to reduce the squad as far down as they can to the bare minimum of 18 players, but you should just keep the originals as squad filler. Even if you do go out and sign six or seven new starting players, just keep the six or seven replacements as backups, and then keep their old backups as third choice players. I think a more realistic way to go about squad building would be to try and keep 25 match ready players with the rest being fillers and youth. This is realistic but it also gives you a fun chance to actually use your youth players when you might have a cut match or tired players. You can bring in these youth players, give them their debut and actually get to use them before they've been boosted up to 80-85 rated like almost every youth player eventually gets to. Our second tip is actually also related to youth players. The youth academy is one of the most overpowered in favour of the player items in the whole of career mode. So if you want to keep this a bit more realistic, try to not use academy scouts that are higher than your team's star rating. An example of this could be starting in League 2, you got a 1 star 1 star scout. By the time you get to the championship, you'll probably be a 3 star rated team. You can then upgrade to a 3 star rated scout. If you're winning the Champions League, go for a 5 star rated scout. Honestly, if you want to keep your youth academy a bit more realistic as well, try to only keep 1 or 2 players per area of the pitch. You don't want to stockpile 9 left wingers while you have 0 right wingers, unless you plan to retrain 1 or 2 of them in advance. Personally, I try and keep one goalkeeper, two defenders, two midfielders and two forwards in my youth academy at all times. If I want to sign a new player, I then release one that I already had and this gives me a good opportunity not only to prioritise who I want, but it also prevents me stockpiling really, really good youth players because I'll only ever have a maximum of seven in the youth academy at any time. Make sure you're also scouting realistic places, so scout countries that you already have players from. Neighbouring countries is another good place to scout. Another example here could be if you're from England, your team's in London. London has a high population of people from Nigeria, so you could scout England, you could scout Wales and Nigeria. That would give you a fairly realistic balance of nations in your youth academy. It would give you something similar to how Arsenal's youth academy looks in real life. For my third little tip that I've discovered over the years, we're moving away from youth and towards signing real players. So to keep it a bit more realistic, I would recommend always fully scouting a player before signing. Of course, if you're using something like SoFIFA, you'll already know the stats, you'll already know the values and the wages and the price that you should be signing them for. I don't think this is so realistic, and especially as you get a few years into the future, this data is going to be out of date. Once you've fully scouted them, make sure you're not signing players that are maybe more than one or two overall higher than your current best player, because this does rarely happen in real life. You won't see someone like Leeds go out and buy an 87 rated striker, despite their next best player being Rafinha who's only an 82. Of course you could give the example of Manchester United, who went out and bought Ronaldo who's a 92, when their next best player is Bruno Fernandes who's an 88. But this is an absolute edge case scenario, where it's one of the best teams in the world buying one of the best players in the world. Chances are if you're playing career mode you're not at that stage yet, so if you're in League 1, your best player is a 61 rated player, then you shouldn't really be signing someone who's a 73. That's the kind of limit that you should be putting on yourself as one or two overall. 
like I said, there is a couple of outlying rules where this could be broken. So if it's an old player returning to a former club or a short loan of a player from the division above. You've seen this in the past. Teams like Nottingham Forest have loaned in Aaron Ramsey, who was way too good for the championship. But he was coming back from injury and despite being around an 80 overall at the time, Forest's next best player was only a 73. Because it was a one month loan, fairly realistic to do this kind of thing in FIFA. The opposite of buying players, of course, is selling players, and that's what the next tip revolves around. So basically, this tip revolves around keeping it realistic by not just stockpiling huge amounts of talented players while the AI tries to buy them off you. So a lot of people will do this, they'll have 687 rated strikers, and they won't sell the 6th choice one to an AI because they want to keep them around. This is pretty unrealistic when you think about it, because there's no way that a striker would ever want to be that far down the pecking order. If you do ever reject an approach, I think you should offer the player a new contract. Not only does this show loyalty to them, but it's also kind of what happens in real life. If a bid's ever rejected for a player, the player will often go to the manager and say, well I could have earned a lot more money at this team, can you offer me the same wage? And if they say yes, usually they're okay with staying. You see this all the time, James Ward-Prowse recently did it for Southampton. He could have gone to one of the bigger teams in the league, but instead he stayed, got a pay rise, and now he's determined to be a Southampton legend. If a bid's coming in over the player's market value, and their team's much higher in the league or has a higher overall rating than yours, then the chances are, in real life, the team would accept this. So in real life, that would happen. In FIFA, maybe you should also be willing to let the player go to that better team. The fifth and final tip in this video is limiting end of contract players. Now I've noticed on FIFA 22, the end of contract players are actually really really good. A lot of really good players don't actually get renewed and then never sign a new contract in FIFA 22. Hopefully this is something that gets patched very soon because it does make the game very very easy. The AI is dumb when it comes to renewing contracts, I think everyone will agree with that statement. You can find world class players for no fee and unlike real life, they'll actually usually take less wages than if they were at a club. If someone like Messi wanted to move this summer, then he would have had massive offers and massive transfer fees that probably would cost around the same as actually buying him from Barcelona a year ago. But if this was in FIFA, you'd be offering no transfer fee, a really small signing on fee of probably around a million pounds, and then a wage that would have been similar if not less than what he was on at Barcelona. Hopefully you can see how ridiculous this is, but not only are you getting a better deal, but the player's actually willing to taste a worse deal than he would have been if he was staying on at his former club. It really doesn't make any sense, and that's why you should limit the amount of end of contract players you sign to maybe one or two every season. Especially if you're signing world class players, then definitely keep it at one, but if you're signing backups or team players that you know would be willing to join, so if you're Manchester United, West Brom's released a youth player and you want to sign them, sure you could probably sign two or three of those, but if you are signing players like Messi, Mbappe, Neymar on free transfers, try and keep it at just one if you really really have to sign them. So that's five of my tips to keep FIFA 22 a bit more fun, a bit more realistic and help you get immersed into your save a little bit more. If you've got any suggestions for other challenges or other little tips that you've got to keep your saves more realistic, please do let me know in the comments below. I also made two similar videos to this on FIFA 21, so if you're looking for more tips, I'm sure most of them can be adapted to FIFA 22 if you do check out those videos. I'll leave links to both of those in the description, and of course, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see more tips and more FIFA 22 realism guides on this channel. Anyway, thank you all for watching, hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you very soon for the next video on the Geography channel. Thank you and goodbye.